So, wide-angle lenses. Now, I'm a big, big fan, and uh, that's mostly because they typically show an interesting perspective, and also they look pretty cool. And if you know anything about me, you'll know I like to look cool. They're, uh, they're not always the best tool for the job, though, wide-angle lenses, and they do have that limitation. So in this video, I'm going to go through my top five tips on uh, how to shoot with a wide-angle lens. If I don't get blown away. Also, this video is sponsored by Lumix, who are the manufacturer of my favourite ever ultra wide angle lens, or well, partial manufacturer. This 8 to 18 is a collaboration with Leica. It's been in my bag about six months or so, and I absolutely love it. It's probably my second favourite lens behind my 35 to 100. If you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know that I like focal lengths that are different from what the eye sees. So, naturally, I quite like ultra wides and telephoto lenses. Absolutely freezing. Should we crack on? So it's always tempting to shoot at the widest focal length on any wide-angle lens, because after all, that's its party trick. Thing is, it's rarely the best composition, so what I suggest is that you start at the longest focal length available on that lens and slowly zoom out until you get a composition you're happy with. You can also check the wide angle, but typically that's what I find works best, as demonstrated in this pointless bit of B-roll. You also hear me demonstrating that, uh, well, that I need a shave. Tip number two when you're using a wide angle lens is to try and keep your subject somewhere in the middle of the frame wherever possible. And uh, that's to help avoid distortion. And to be honest, even the best lenses suffer from distortion when they're super, super wide. It's just kind of a fact of life. And you notice it when you've either got a subject close up or if you've got lots and lots of straight lines in, uh, in your photo. So there are some scenarios, for example, where you're probably not gonna notice it all that much. Say, if you're in tropical waters, scuba diving, taking photos of fish, there aren't really many straight lines down there and therefore you probably won't notice distortion all that much. Scuba diving in the tropics is a nice thought, isn't it? Stood here. I mean, the sun's out, but my ears don't know it. If you're wondering what I mean by ears, it's got nothing to do with hearing. I just can't. They're freezing. Oh, also, I can show you what I mean by keeping subjects in the middle of the frame. Right, so here's my face. Hopefully not all that distorted because it's somewhere in the middle of the frame. But look at my arm down here. That looks super distorted. And if I move my face to down here, can't really see if I'm still in the frame, but hopefully I am. Or up here, look how long my face gets. And that's why it's important, particularly when you've got a close up subject, to try and keep it somewhere in the middle of the frame. Because otherwise, you can end up with, uh, with a fair bit of distortion at super wide focal lengths. Uh, and for exactly the same reason, it's also good wherever possible, again, to uh, keep your horizon straight when you're using super wide angle lenses, because otherwise you can end up with that exact same effect, but with horizons and, as I say, straight lines and stuff, so yeah. Basically trying to keep your camera straight and your subject somewhere in the middle of the frame is, uh, is optimal if you're trying to avoid distortion. Some people like distortion, and there are times when I, I don't mind it too, but generally speaking, I like to avoid it. You're probably noticing I'm not really showing you any photos to demonstrate what I'm talking about. It's because the light's rubbish, so I'm not really bothering to take any photos. Cracking part of the world though, I've been here once before. This place is called Winnett's Pass in the Peak District, and uh, I now live 10 minutes away, so I'm going to be coming here a lot, I think, particularly in the winter, trying to get cloud inversions and stuff, which I think will look pretty cool here. But yeah, today with the shadows and the harsh light, it's not particularly photogenic. Ugh. Peace and quiet in the countryside. Lovely. Anyway, tip number three is that if you're using wider focal lengths, then typically you can use wider apertures too. So let's say you've got a shot at 20 millimeters full frame equivalent, and then the same shot, 50 millimeters full frame equivalent. I mean, I know they won't be the same shot, but like of the same scene. Uh, and you have them at the same aperture, and if that's the case, there will be more stuff in focus in the wider shot than there would be in the, um, in the longer shot, but sort of in the same frame. That makes sense in my head, I don't know if it's, if it's coming across. On a photo that's 50 millimeters, so that they match the same framing, the wider one will have more 
Basically, wider focal lengths you can shoot at wider apertures and uh, still have stuff in focus, which means, in practice, that you can have faster shutter speeds and therefore you don't need to use a tripod as much, which I love because I, I hate tripods, as many of you will know. Also, wider focal lengths suffer less from camera shake and uh, typically you can get sharper shots from, uh, from slower shutter speeds. What are they doing down there? I think they're just repairing the road, it's not actually that exciting. Uh, tip number four is that it's very, very important to include things in the foreground when you use a super wide angle lens. Otherwise, as I said before, everything just looks like it's tiny and really, really far away. So if you include things in the foreground, typically you can avoid that and maintain interest right throughout the frame. Uh, that's what this clip was supposed to demonstrate. It was supposed to show me trying really hard to get some things in the foreground. Sadly, the camera fell over and I didn't really notice. And as a consequence, all it really shows is my legs. Idiot. Five is that I find on days like today. Well, you can't really hear me because it's too windy, so I'll I'll just tell you what I was saying. Basically, I was rabbiting on about the fact that I'd chosen not a great day to film this video, given that these conditions in really harsh light with loads of really harsh shadows are not all that conducive, in my opinion, to using a wide angle lens. I'd prefer to use a telephoto lens in these conditions, as I've said in previous videos, because you can really focus in on specific areas that are not affected by the really harsh, unattractive shadows. So to sum up, I decided to film a video about wide angle lenses in probably the least favorable conditions for wide angle lenses. And it was too windy for you to hear me, which let's be honest is, is pretty much in line with the rest of my channel. Thanks for watching.